Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. And I'm Rick, and I'm here because I like Craig so much. <laughs> we had a debate as to whether we would just do the whole thing in character. character. Um, Rick's got a stand-up desk, and as he like ejected the cat from the desktop, I saw there was a Yoda picture, which is directly behind him where you can't see it, unless he moves like that. And then I thought, hmm, do the entire interview as Yoda, shall we? <laughs> I thought, no, I can't do that for 20 minutes. I, I would love that if you do that for me. Mm, 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 podcasting. <laughs> no, I can't do that the whole time. And there's probably like a copyright problem with that too, impersonating actual characters. Um, so I'm torn between, uh, I have like a process for these, right? This is, I've done 50 plus of them and I can sort of like cultivate a conversation. And I just had a conversation with someone where we were like, so meta talking about creating conversations, but I feel more like people might enjoy you and I talking more about like communities and like we've seen a couple of people learn to podcast and we have a couple of podcast episodes that are out and I'm trying to build a, you know, a new community. And I'm wondering, uh, by the way, thank you. You keep yelling at me nicely without caps locking it to like post a business plan, like, you know, explain the business model for the podcaster community. So I'm wondering if we should talk about community building or talk about maybe the shutdown of one of our other favorite communities. I don't know if I wanted to talk names. Most people will know what I'm talking about. Um, any of those things jump out at you as like... Yeah, gladly. Uh, I'd rather look forward than backwards, though. <laughs> yes, I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh so what do you think about Discourse uh, with a capital D, the piece of software named Discourse? I, I like I like love to hate it. Like it's really cool and it's really clean looking, but everybody still has trouble using it. So I'm thinking it's not as cool as I think it is. I, I love the tool and I think both of you are fans of it, but I think that it's a hurdle to get into. There's a le learning curve where you mm. need to learn it. And... Um, I think that's sad, I, and I don't know how to make it better. But you and I are very, very comfortable with the computer stuff. But I find if you're not, there's a resistance to start playing around with it so you learn it. But you've always been my go-to when I don't know how to <laughs> turn a knob or do something. Yeah. So, But again, I have you, uh, and most newbies don't. So, And I've been thinking long and hard for how do we help them get over the hump of learning how to use it because I do really like it. I used to think that the, well, you know, as soon as I say the problem, I'm clearly oversimplifying, but I used to think that the big problem was that people were afraid to poke it. Um, you know, there's a lot like you click on the silhouette or, you know, open your avatar and there's like these things and then discourse keeps changing stuff. So as soon as you make a screen share, they move something and everything that I know about discourse I did not read the manual. I just, I, I had it in, I, I had one that I was running and I just went, what's this do? What's that do? Oh, I broke it. <laughs> Support. How do I, you know? Um, so on one hand, I, I think that if we could encourage people just generally to, to poke things more. And, and then I started thinking like, well, where did I get that? Like, that's a mindset that the, this mindset of somewhere I read, everything is figure out a bull which is a horrible English slaughtering that's not grammatically correct. But the I idea is... It, it's a great book from by Marie Folio, though. Is that right? Is that where that's from? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know, but she wrote a book. I think that's named that. <laughs> maybe that's her. Oh, maybe that book is in one of my piles somewhere. Oh, well, that would be ironic. Um, but how, do you see yourself as somebody... like uh, You strike me as somebody who can figure things out and... It wouldn't occur to you, like, if you decide not to fix your farm tractor, it's because you value your time more than the curiosity of how does the farm tractor really work? Like, am I pigeonhole pigeonholing you correctly by saying you're no. definitely a guy who can figure things uh, well, out? Well, yes and no. When we're talking about a tractor, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. And uh, I guess interest level has something to do with it. <laughs> oh, that's but, a good point. But... Um, if you ask my lady love, I'm kind of ignorant about 
everything except a few very narrow interest slots like computers and computer games and hmm. parkour and a few a few very very narrow areas oh, that but, keep going keep going no but but i think if i have an interest in things i will figure it out and going back to what you mentioned with this course i think i have a track record of knowing i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> I know I can figure it out. Yeah. I think uh, what we don't get with newbies in whatever area is if you don't have that previous experience that I've been this lost before and it's okay, or I have backups, mm. <laughs> it's burning, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> yes. if you don't have those experiences, poking the box is scary because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's like a mouse trap. Well, and that, so, hey, the, there's there's the solution to my problem. So I, I built this new community, right? Everybody listening to this show knows what I'm talking about. And it's based on discourse. And we actually, everybody's, well, not everybody, 95, 90% of them are coming from a lot of multiple experiences with discourse from an online course. Um, so they come in and they understand, you know, what things generally look like. Um, but they're still... Uh, relatively beginner, novice level users of discourse. And I was very mindful of that when I was building, like, all right, don't, don't build structure. Don't have multiple layers of categories in category. Just like, what's the simplest thing that could possibly work? Let's try that. And it's been working really well. Like people message me like, hey, I couldn't figure out how to make the whatever do the whatever. And, and then my first thought is, well, oh, you did it perfectly. You tried. And then message me, which is the perfect course of action. So maybe I should re uh, move the origins of my graph. Maybe I should recenter my graph to be, oh no, wait, it's working perfectly because everybody who's stuck messages me, uh, which is not a problem until we get to like 5,000 people. So to keep doing that. And then I can have somebody else look at my messages at that point uh, and do some triage. So maybe I should recenter my thing and you know, my mental point of view and say, oh, well, what's What's, is there anything actually wrong? And maybe the people in, in this community and other ones that I've seen, they're just so expletive, deleted, excited to see, you know, to be there. They, they've figured it out enough. They know how to message Craig. Well, that works. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's important to ask ourselves, is it working? And how do we know? Do you have people who sign up who, and who don't post anything, including a message for help to you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, because I think there's a lot of fuel there for people who want to be in these kind of communities, who know how to learn and help and ask for help. Uh, and helping others is a great way to learn the tool, by the way. Yes. Um, so, um, I, you don't need to train them, but you're also having people from other axes joining who don't have that experience. It's going to go like, what, what is this? How do you use it? It's scary. Mm. I, I don't know what plain text typing and formatting is. It's scary. So, <laughs> Mark it down? So, what the? So yeah. I, I used to, I'm used to Microsoft Word, and this doesn't look like it. So can it break something? Can I? Am I spamming the whole web? So those are the people we need to find. And I think we have the fuel why they want to come, but I also think we need to look at friction. How can we make a few experiments easy for them? So they feel more comfortable with taking things up a level. Once more louder for the other Craig that doesn't always listen. I think that that's really insightful. And uh, so I'm staring up into my left like I have too much stuff in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Rick can see that. And what I'm thinking is that one of the things that I'm uh, that I talk about a lot that I'm really like this is really important is that a significant um, you know right now it's probably also a majority but like a really important portion of the content in podcaster community is public you don't have to log in you you can like land on a Google search and scroll and yes discourse would be like hey it looks like you're enjoying the conversation and you can be like shut up you can just dismiss that and you don't have to log in and I think. I've always known that's important because I believe that a private community can really create some gems and then it's like, 
you know, share that stuff is awesome. Um, but I hadn't realized that I'm also but doing that is also, I'm going to say teaching the lurkers. I don't mean that in a bad way, teaching the lurkers that it's okay to just hang out here, you know, and scroll around as long as you're willing to dismiss an occasional notification. And, and then, uh, I haven't, uh, I have a problem of, with data analysis and I purposely don't want to crawl up into all the reports, but I suspect that after a while, they're eventually going to find something that, oh, that's just so awesome. I have to press the like button <laughs> and then you have to log in. It's free, but now you have to like go through a screen and you have to do a thing and now you're logged in and like things change and we log in, then discourse the, I wish they would rename the disco bot, the discourse robot then starts to onboard you with some tasks. And I, I I'm really thinking like, wow. The fact that I don't make you log in and deal with the disco bot on day one is probably also a really good um, onboarding strategy. Like, hey, just show up and scroll. Um, and and the business model, the plan is such that currently it is working. Like, we have enough people in you know what I call the inner circle of, of really awesome people. <clears throat> Rick, awesome, thank you. Really awesome people who like put money in the hat and make the thing sustainable. So. Anyway, I'm talking and Rick's just using me as a, this is a coaching session. <laughs> if you say, how does that make you feel? I'm hitting the stop button. <laughs> so you can tell me. Yeah. <laughs> quit. yeah so no, I, I think that's important that I, I'm really into free content and uh, removing resistance so people can use it and when they know this is for me then they can uh, vote with their attention first signing up and doing yes. a few of those uh, rituals and then eventually vote with their money when they know this is actually helping or or i want to sponsor because i've gotten so much help again yeah. nudge nudge craig i've gotten help from you for years so um <laughs> thank you mm, and uh, you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so i think um i think that is a good model but i think there's a lot of people don't know the robot they don't know yeah do I it's need a, to? Can I skip? We know we can skip it. We can, we can ignore it. It's just <laughs> yeah. a robot. But if you've never seen something like that before, they don't know. Are someone waiting for me? Is it urgent? Do I need to deal with this right now? I don't know what to do. Yeah. Even if it's quite straightforward. But I also think uh, the noise inside, or how to reply, how to come. It, it is a beautiful. Uh, platform when it comes to discussing and highlighting i don't I, I didn't read all yeah. your posts but i read read these three lines and here's my thoughts yeah it really helps you do that if you know how to play with it but mm. if you don't and you see everyone else playing with it yeah that can turn into resistance yeah have you seen it that they invented a slow mode have you seen this so there's no. a feature oh it's like so cool there's a they, they, so sometimes they have problems where, you know, somebody will bring up a hot button topic and all of a sudden it's like, everybody starts responding. And there are all these little magic rules like you can't, and it's configurable, but you can't post three replies in a row. Like if yeah. you, once you get the three, then it like, yeah, somebody else has to post. So like it has all these things to try and rate limit you. And if you're a certain level of user, you can only do certain things. But still, if 400 people all have a bee in their bonnet, you get this raging topic will come up and there's a slow mode. And when you turn slow mode on, on a topic, everybody's allowed like one post every 24 hours. It puts in all these written, like it just turns the whole thing into a glacier. And every time you try to do something, it says to come back tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like it's great. Um, so they, there's so much magic. Um, and I, I love that idea of yeah, there's a bunch of people behind a curtain somewhere who put in a couple thousand keystrokes and then it just works. I love when software works like that. But sometimes I wish Discourse had like a show me mode that you could turn on and suddenly everything would have hovers. You know, like nothing does anything anymore, but everything you mouse over when you click, it just tells you what is all this stuff on my screen? What's this do? What's that do? What does this dot, dot, dot do? It would just like tell me all that stuff. I, I put that in as a feature request, by the way. So yeah, a way to turn on tool tips on everything and disable all the functionality so I can just see the tool tips. Yeah, and no, I, th I think that goes back to feeling safe, knowing that you can't break it, which again, we know, but uh, those who need to know don't know. We also know that we can 
press question mark and get something very close to what you're describing in our language, yeah. right? Yeah. But they don't know. <laughs> and even if they see it, they might not be keyboard people yeah. like us. So it wouldn't help them anyway. So I, I do believe, again, it's a beautiful tool, but the learning curve is a bit steep. The first, and it's just five minutes. If you give it five minutes playing around, you've learned what you need to know. You're not a master, but you feel comfortable enough to realize where did my post go? <laughs> what am I supposed <laughs> that to do? That happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, but but you learn that. If if you intend if you're playing attention with it, you yeah. learn that in five minutes. I also I uh, <clears throat> in this particular community, I'm really being um overt or I'm, I have no qualms because it's my house. It's my living room. I have no qualms about moving people's stuff around and editing their titles. And it's super helpful. People, I'm just like, it's awesome. You press post and the fact that you put it in resources instead of public, you know, who cares? I just change the topic and I hit thing. And then, you know, you can do reply and turn it into a direct message and say, hey, you know, I, I moved this for you. And people are like, oh, that's great. Or uh, because it's all centered around podcasting, there's a place where we can post our show. And then people post our show and I'm like, you know, if you put your image in there, <laughs> it'll show up. So I'm always like trying to help them get more fun and more, more bang out of it. Um, Cause I think it's just so, <clears throat> I, I love when you, when you look at something and the more you look at it, the more you realize, wow, a bunch of people, I don't just mean me, a bunch of people put a lot of time into this. And, and there's thought here, like somebody, uh, I think it was Annette just started another topic about her field recording kit. You know, she's got like a, a standard Jansport backpack and she's just like, here's all the stuff that's in the bag. And then somebody else who I'm actually not even sure I know who it is. Like, I was like, who's that? You know, like, responded. <laughs> yeah. I love when that happens. I'm like, I don't know who that person is. Somebody responded with like, wow. And had a question. And then she, I think took another photo and I'm just like, wow, like a community. You know, I, I just, I've always had the community builder connector bug. Um, for lack of a better term, wow. it's yeah, and I, and I and I love that. And again, we who get it realize that we can learn together here. Well, there is a new tool in town. Let's uh, the first early birds yeah. take a look at it, and then everyone learns very much faster together. Uh, or say no, this isn't for us. They're missing whatever critical function, so we'll wait until yeah. they get that so uh, instead of having 200 people trying the same thing and discover the, <laughs> the same thing we we move as a group very quick we learn as a group very quick um but that's again for us who knows i think it's hard when you're standing outside and you don't know how how to tap into that yeah, because it doesn't look like other things. It doesn't look like Facebook or uh, even LinkedIn or Stack Exchange. If people know, you know, if you're geeks and you know what those things are, um, it looks very different. <clears throat> and and now when I go to other places, like as I'm in a lot of communities for technology stuff, uh, I go to other places and I'm just like, whoa, this this is rough. You know what I mean? Like I know how to work it. I know all the controls, but I'm just like, oh man, you got to do what? You know, I'm like. Um, so yeah, and, and, and I have this structure need when, when I'm in Slack and people don't reply in thread and it's like, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're, you're not, you're not playing with a meta that's already there. Why, right. why don't you do it? Why, why are you in Slack, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's another thing. No, I mean uh, to them. If you're, why are you using this tool if you're not going to use yeah. the basic feature? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, again, but we know how it can be. But a lot of people don't even have a community. And I think yeah. that's the first step, banding up with a few people that want, are where you want are and want to go where you want to go. Uh, and you're learning on the job there. But I think Discord is a great tool, but I don't think the tool matters. I think it's start up, be generous to a few people and group up and yeah, they'll, saying they'll no. They'll bend it to or, work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like um, the way, I'm not going to unpack all the business details, but the, the way that Podcom works, um, a couple of people, and it's, the number is bigger than two, it's maybe three or four or five people are like, um, can I pay more? Because <laughs> you know, there's like a recurring, and, and I'm like, well, I mean, technically, yes, you could just PayPal money to, you know, to Craig, but don't. Like the the people who jumped, you know, took the generous leap when I said, hey guys, I made this, then, you know, you guys are all grandfathered in at that, at that price. And that's the number that you should be paying. And 
um, that was something I did very intentionally in the very beginning was to set it low so that people could go like, that number is so small, like, because it gave enough people through their hat over the fence that it made it work. Um, and now I'm in, I've already done it once, but I will continue to raise the cost so that the 700th person who wants to like have all the goodies, they're like, Oh, well, these people have been here, you know, to, everybody else has been here for 10 years. They made it awesome. You don't get to pay what they paid. Like, you know, they, first of all, they've paid for seven years, right? And, you know, so you need to catch up. Right? Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm expecting to do is, is to make it because it, it can't be a cool community of 27,000 people. Like that's not going to work. It's got to be a small enough group um, that maybe everybody doesn't know each other, but you have a, you, you make a click. You know, you find 10 people or something. Um, and if it's a cocktail party of a thousand people, you're not going to be able to, to do the magical things that we can currently do when it's a hundred people at the moment. So <clears throat> that's one. And, 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 and again, I, I really believe that, that people want to give back after receiving so much. Uh, and, um, but I also believe that as you're saying, if anyone can join this changes the dynamic very mm -hmm. much, and it's not really for the initial <laughs> people who <laughs> yeah. had, had <clears throat> yeah. this is what we think it's for. But uh, again, I think you're dancing that line very beautiful with most data here is free. Yeah. And uh, you, you don't have to play by the member rule if you don't want to. Uh, I, I don't believe in locking in knowledge or locking in ideas. Yes. Yes. But uh, I, it has to be sustainable otherwise. And I yeah, think, I, again, the price tag is part of how much do other people care about being here. Yeah. The other knob that uh, I will probably have to turn before I play with the, val the, the dollar value um, is at the moment, anybody can just walk up to the discourse platform, click put your email password, verify your email and you're in, and then you can access almost all the areas. There are a few places that you can read, but you can't post. Um, and that's all by design. And one of the first things that I'm just like, I'm not quite sure what number it should be at. Am I, is, it, is it 500 or whatever? Um, I'm going to disable the self-service sign up and make it so that you need a, an invitation from somebody else. And the discourse system has like a really detailed gamified score, you know, people have levels. Um, and roughly you have to be engaged with the platform for about three months to make it like not every single day, but you have to log in pretty often and post a couple of things and do a lot and really demonstrate, you know, you're active before discourse gives you the invite someone else button to that, which generates a unique link, which you can then give to other people. And of course, under the hood, I can tell who invited who. So if somebody invites a bunch of asshats, I know where are these people coming from? You know, like I can track it back. Um, no, so that'll that, but, probably be the first thing. Yeah, and I think um, to understand, so the robots don't come in and do a lot of bad stuff or uh, suck <clears throat> the post dry, and suddenly I find my content showing up somewhere else and it looks like I posted it. <laughs> yeah. So fingers crossed there. They have a lot of cool stuff with Akami in the back for preventing robotic signups. Um, but you could still astroturf it, you know, with humans, like there's, it's an arms race. And that's another reason yeah. why I love discourse yeah. is because I'm just like, um, Craig, the single human does not have the resources to fight an arms race against, yeah. uh, you know, barbarian hordes and discourse. If anybody does, it's going to be some, some of the big one, big player. So that's another reason why I really like it. Um, and because I use the, um, the community is built using their host, they call hosted discourse. I, I actually can email the team like, guys, what's going on with, you know, um, yeah. with problems. Yeah. Well. yeah. But I also <clears throat> think it goes back to explaining that a lot of people don't understand why does this look so gamified, but it's not just so you can track and it's not just so yes. to level up people, but it's actually... <laughs> Is that a human? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there, yeah. there's a, they've, it's a lot of thinking going into the platform. Yeah. It's flagged some stuff already. Somebody, um, but it's just people who are excited. Somebody like logged in and within two minutes had like posted a reply and a couple of posts and they hadn't set their, any of their profile stuff or anything. And it like raised a flag and held one of their posts. And I was always like, well, I've never seen something in the flagged queue. I'm like, what's that? Like, I don't know. I'm like, whoa, no, that's legit. And, yeah. and it's just the way it looks is like, oh, that person's been a member about three seconds and they're already doing these things. Mm, that doesn't look yeah. human. 
I'm like, no, no. Uh, well, what or even if it's human, <clears throat> is that a behavior we want to promote? Yeah. I will end the spam. It's a lot like yeah. two links in a short sp time. Yeah. is very promotional looking. <laughs> you, you know, it's another thing like you talk about what does it look like? What do things smell like? You know, is this how we do it? Um, I'm going to try and fight the good fight against email signatures. Um, so because discourse, uh, will send you email messages and you can just reply to the email and it yeah. posts a reply in the thread, your email signature. Now there's this complicated thing in the software, which tries to figure out where your email signature starts. And then it rolls it up into a little ellipse icon, which you can click to reveal. Um, but it tries to collapse that stuff. And the, the way, one of the things it uses to detect is a, uh, there's actually an RFC from Usenet days about dash dash space and then a new line. And that's like the standard, I'm air quoting because there aren't any standards for anything, but that's like the standard beginning of a signature line. So I'm going to see how far we get with me. Anytime I see a SIG signature, I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> at the top of your SIG, because because otherwise like half of the post is, you know, Craig Constantine and my mission is like, blah, 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 blah. Like on all that stuff, it just like roll up. So when somebody writes, that's awesome. It just has their avatar and their name and it says, that's awesome. And it's, then it's super easy to scroll and you don't see all this repetitive content, but I will see how far I get with <laughs> fighting the good fight about signatures on email replies. No, we'll see. Yeah. And I think this goes back also to the learning curve that a lot of you and I, have, I think I've taken like 30, 35 Akimbo's <laughs> and, uh, two. I've done two. Yeah, of course, the second one I took was a freebie because all of the times I've volunteered in the other one, <laughs> I have like eight more credits or something stupid. Yeah. Same here. Uh, uh Sorry, I, I derailed you. No, 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 it's right. And, but I mean, I, I've seen a lot of people who never touched the platform. They only go play with the, the posting via email so they totally miss sections and and they again we need to embrace that they are the one who's new they have a right to be new how can we yeah. help them we who are experienced but it can look like <clears throat> they're here they're participating we need to be the one saying, well, it looks like you're not doing section one, two, three. It looks like you're yeah. posting to this stuff. And and after a while, we can see, well, you're not creating new stuff. You're replying to things that were emailed to you. Yes. You, you look like an active user, but you're really not. So how can we then help them? Hmm. Uh, and I think um, what you said with signature and stuff like that, that's a great way to okay what what should we monitor how should we say well i'm missing this from the equation how can we help you log on what i yeah. would say normally for example i think the <clears throat> breaking the uh, changing the medium helps um i would love to have more i'm just not quite sure how to like do enough of them and get them in enough time zones more like um these quick like half hour camp, I call them campfires, little little Zoom calls where we get together. We don't record the Zoom call. So like if, you, if you're picking your nose, nobody's going to ever see it unless they're on the call. And and then it just gets people to show up and um, in both directions, like Craig gets to meet the new people, but the new people go, oh, these, you know, crazy people I see posting all over. They're just regular people who are on the platform a lot. And I think that helps. I know that helps uh, humanize yeah, it helps everybody humanize the other person. It's like, oh, they're just a regular person, two hands. They're just used to the platform, and then, and and when they when they go, uh, I can't figure out how to, and then we're all like, oh, sorry, that's really easy. I'll show you, or you know, here, screen share, yeah. you know, click, yeah. click, click. Um, so I, I think that's one of the things I want to try and do more of is is to have more opportunities for the group to get together. And I, I've been thinking about. I have like office, air quoting office hours where I schedule doing small podcast recordings. And I'm thinking about having like lots of little, you know, not a hundred, but maybe three or four a week where in those office hours, I just have a half hour blocked out and I'll just have a zoom call, you know, just parked over there. And if anybody wants to jump in and say hi, then I can try and cover more time zones. But I, I really think that's, that I think is a lot of the magic to what makes the akimbo podcasting course work is people show up on the saturday call and even if they're just just watching they're just pat then then they they go away with like a man those people are contagiously awesome you know and then they, they go and then they click through and like and they just yeah, are yeah. Or, or as you said uh 
Craig just showed me how it looks and I, do, I don't see it like that. So, okay, <laughs> I should do it differently. Yeah. Um, or there's more to see behind this and this, but also goes back to we who are senior need to uh, understand that with the email that we talked about earlier, if you're hosting a live call on a time zone, Discord serves as beautiful. Yes. Even if we're com- but if as soon as someone is replying on an email, it's um, cut in stone on their time zone and it's confusing yeah. someone who don't see that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's a lot of pitfalls that you and I will see. That's a reply. That's not live. That's not Discord <laughs> saying. It's a, it's a mess, frozen message <clears throat> on their time zone. Um, but if you knew, how can you know? Yeah. It looks very much the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's one little teeny tiny icon <laughs> yeah. that you would miss. So, cool. So, yeah, and uh, it's so easy for us to forget who's used to it. Yeah. All right. Well, be mindful of your time, Michelle. <laughs> um, what that, I hate picking titles. What do I call this show? What episode? What is this episode? Well, I think we geeked out on the discourse or discussion forums. Um, and um, yeah, we can give you, we can geek up even better. Is technology enough for community? Hmm. Because that's really what we've been talking about. We haven't, we didn't talk about how connecting and yeah, I tech to uh, to me, build it and they will come is not true. It's not sufficient. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. you you need it needs to work. Um, yeah, but there's a big wide range of what will work, and I I keep saying I need to type faster or have more hours in the day. I need to write up a big blog post about, uh, I, this is not my first rodeo, um, but this is the first community that I've ever built without exception. That's actually been successful, like right out of the gate. Um, and I'm just like, okay, I keep waiting for like the shoe to fall. I'm like something's got to go wrong here <laughs> because I'm not used to this succeeding. And uh, the only thing I can point to that's really different is there are hundreds of people who know me as a podcaster who's got some technical online skills and who is stupidly helpful. So when he said I made this, they all went, okay. <clears throat> and that uh, earning the attention, I think was the magic sauce. There's certainly some serendipity. There's certainly luck, you know, timing um, as part of it. Uh, if you try to do this at 200 BC, it would be too early. Um, but I think the biggest linchpin or the biggest keystone this time around was just having spent years, you know, becoming known as a tech geeky guy who podcasts. Uh, that, that that was the magic sauce this time, I believe. Yeah. And I think um, since I've known you for a long time, I think it's really worth highlighting that you give this gave this a try exactly the same platform two or three years ago. <laughs> So, so it wasn't the platform that was the magic yes. because, yes. because it was the same. It was you earning yeah. to lead this community for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the timing was wrong. You know, like, like yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, 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 a, it's a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. The timing but, was wrong and I didn't see the timing was wrong. I, I should have, I should have been able to read that. Now I think I could read that if that would have been the case. I, I was there with you when you started yeah. the, the first thing. So, so I don't think the timing was bad there either. The, and uh, what I want your listeners to get away from with this call is not this course was enough because it wasn't. Yeah, the tool—it's never the tool. It's the r- stuff around the tool, how you use the tool, because this court haven't changed so much in three years. Right, Re- it really haven't. It's the other work you did, Craig, that's changed. Well, thank you. There are other there are other aspects like um, the podcasters. If you're listening to this, and you're not a podcaster. I don't know what you're doing. But a lot of <laughs> exactly, podcasters. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Go use your time doing something useful. Um, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of practices like we call it sixty seconds, and and there are dailies which has meanings beyond podcasting, <clears throat> and there are these other things like that and some other stuff that we have not built in the community, but there are people talking about it, and I keep having these conversations with people, and I'm like, okay. The old Craig, you know, 10 more years ago would have been like, we could build this, we could build that. I'd be like, I'd be like grabbing tools and going, does this excite you? Does this excite you? And now I'm instead, I'm going like, what would excite you? <laughs> like, yeah. what is the thing that you can't do now? And I'm like fishing for the the problem or the, the magic key that they're looking for to open some door. Um, and then I know that when they go, oh, oh, I need a better bread slicer. I'd be like, 
I'll be right back. You know, and I get, here you go. You know, like I can, I know we can build it. Um, it's just learning to listen, to find out what people really want. Um, and also not dividing my efforts into too many buckets, but Anyway, I'm still fishing for a title for this. Is this? Yeah, so, sorry, I'm cast uh, a little bit <laughs> because you just poked what, what I, I did record my episode earlier today when you said uh, the lock and the key there, what, what, and and I talk about community specifically there to leveling up together, and I think. Mm. The mistake going back on the platform is here's a tool that will solve your pain. Here's a tool, a solution for your problem. Here's a key for your lock. Uh, and I think the magic with the community is there's a, you're leading into uncertainty. You're learning what better looks like for a future thing that neither of you know what it's going to morph into. So you're kind of it's not the easy fix So here, I fixed it. Now you can work. Now you can record your 60 seconds. Now you can do this. Uh, and you know, it's kind of working mm -hmm. for that. It's together you're creating, okay, what is the next level of needs that we, that we need to be solving? How do we grow together and learning together, practicing together? And uh, that's beautiful with communities. But again, yeah. it's not about the tool. <laughs> yeah. But the tool helps because it removes friction. It removes problems, obstacles. Yeah. Yeah, it eliminates degrees of freedom. So you're like, oh, well, I guess it's supposed to go this way or that way. You know, clearly that other thing isn't the right way. So, yeah. so title, um, not tech, community and belonging or purposeful belonging or something like that. Mm. We could do a, a my, my brain immediately went, oh, I got to squish that in a little graphic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, oh. No, no, we'll go with belonging. How about belonging? Yeah, sounds good. Mm, belonging at full B. I'm telling you, I can't do that when laughing. <laughs> All right. We'll call it belonging. I took zero notes. I'll have to listen again. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for uh, being a sounding board. Um <laughs> I was just thinking, I also like when, when I start talking in other contexts, you know, like on a call and then in my internal monologue, I'm going, stop talking, stop talking. And eventually I stop and then Rick comes off mute and goes, I want to just unpack some, <laughs> you know, like, cause I go way too fast. I just love that you do that. It's just like, I feel like a dog getting collared, you know, <laughs> So thank you very much for often being the yen to my crazy ass yin, or is it, like, no, that's the yin to my crazy ass yen. Uh, well, and thanks for all your support over the years. Means you have more to give. It doesn't mean that you're on strike <laughs> because you're going too fast. Uh, but I do yeah. believe again uh, that uh, it's easy. We forget how it is to be new. Yes, we yes. know a lot of jargon. We know a lot of what it's for. We, you and I, are again talking about the community building for the future. You and I are very much in the future. <laughs> when we're yeah. talking what yeah. is it for not right now but after this recording what is it for yeah so and and it's easy that we run away from people because <laughs> we're running too fast yeah and then we're not helping them yeah or we're running in a way they're not interested in again i'm quite ignorant in most other things <laughs> so they're not following because <laughs> nobody cares yeah all right. Well, I'll be mindful of your time. That's like a double serving sized episode. I think that's cool. Um, so we'll call it belonging and I'll just say, Hey, as always, thanks for all your support. And it was a super colossal pleasure to get a chance to talk to you, Rick. Likewise. Thank you.